Welcome back to Improvision Entertainment. My name is Hunter Munn. And my name is Daniel. And you are listening to Mun Saga. And what that is, is a podcast that we're producing, obviously, because you're here, you're enjoying it. It is going to be both with and about us, and we're also going to have other people on from time to time who either share uh, interests or have knowledge that we don't have about particular topics. Um, hopefully, you're going to enjoy yourself. Uh, we're going to throw visuals on screen for those people who are watching the visual version of this and hopefully that will enhance the experience. Now, as for the name Mun Saga, because someone's going to inevitably ask, Mun is a term that I started using many, many years ago, which is basically short for human, and it means the person behind the character. If you're into roleplay, then that's just... You know, there are many other terms that many other people use, but it basically means that the player, the person who's involved. I use Mun to mean, like, the real, the core of the person, the actual behind the events. Because, you know, you put on a particular face when you're with your boss and your fellow employees at work, and you put on a different face when you're with your family. But to me, not just in role play when you're playing a different character and you're being somebody completely else, but also in other walks of life, the Mun is the real person who's in the background. So the Mun Saga, if you will, is going to be the story of the real person, whoever the real people are, uh, who are going to be both a part of this podcast and hopefully you guys who are out there listening and watching. And so to start that off, we decided to do this initial episode before we actually have a real first episode so that you guys could get to know a little bit about us. And uh, we'll end it off by throwing back to you the audience and having you vote on what we'll actually do for our very first actual topic in our very first actual episode past this. Uh, if you're not interested in necessarily knowing the nitty-gritty details of how these uh, two particular months got into this, okay, you can move forward in the playlist and go to the next actual first episode. Otherwise, here we are, and we're going to do this first. So, I am Hunter Munn, otherwise the one true Hunter Munn, because, well, I'm I'm the Munn that is the Munn of Hunter. That's how that works. And I am Daniel, a.k.a. the Grey Jedi, because I like to say I have a little bit of black and white in me. I hear occasionally over on the Star Wars side of things, there's a there's a little bit of some kind of controversy, like you can't have a gray Jedi, but I mean, uh, that's that's what he is. That's that's him as a mun. There you go. So let me see if I can get the, get all these adjectives correctly for the for the proper introduction for those on the internet who are uh, intending on ripping this apart later, because I, I know how you guys work and it's cool. It's I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk to you. I'm gonna talk to the awesome people who are listening right now. But for all you jerks, all right, this is for you. I am a progressive transgender, furry, atheist. Um, you didn't say oh, agnostic. I, what? Say what? You, you didn't say agnostic. Why would I say agnostic? I'm not That's agnostic. I'm an atheist. I thought you said you're agnostic and atheist. Um, uh, no, because if you're... No, because a, an atheist does not believe that there is a supreme being. An agnostic believes that there is something out there that they can't yet understand. So they still kind of believe, they just don't believe in a specific deity? That's my understanding can... of agnosticism. Fair enough. I mean, I guess like even an atheist could believe like could believe in something outside of their control, but that's really besides the point. Well, I mean, that's just a matter of faith. You can still have faith even if you're an atheist. You can have faith in things. So I mean, fair enough. All right. Sorry to cut you off. Moving on. Uh, well, I mean, the only last thing I was going to say is for everyone out there, including Daniel, a little bit. Uh, I I use Apple products. I just I do. I use Apple products. All right, Daniel, you're short. Your, your turn. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm not sure what about me people don't won't like necessarily, so I'll just go off of things that people have told me that I'm weird for doing or believing in. I would say I'm kind of progressive, liberal in some senses, conservative in others, really depends on the thing. You just need to ask me my opinion on something and I'll tell you, and eventually if you ask me for enough opinions, you will get offended. That is, that is true of pretty much every walk of life, about everything. Mm, I'm sure there are people who are too PC to try to offend nobody, but I'm sure eventually they'll fail at that. Man, the number of Tumblr threads that begin with, I'm making this post not to offend anyone, and the very first reply is somebody getting offended, even if it's joking. I mean, there it is. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I believe you're agnostic, is that correct? Yeah, I'm agnostic. Okay. Raised religious, didn't see the point of it at a certain point. And I was like, ah, this is a waste of my time. Yeah, I kind of think I didn't believe, like, the whole time, but I just... it was, I didn't realize there was an alternative, which is, you know, to just not. Yeah, no, I kind of get what you mean, because I kind of felt the same way, because, like, for a while, it didn't dawn on me that I didn't make the decision to be religious. And then when it did, I was like, why am I doing this for, like, a couple of years? And then after that couple of years, I was like, ah, I'm just going to stop. 
we could have an entire episode, I'm sure, about when when specifically we realized that we were atheists or agnostic. And if you guys want us to have that episode, you can at least this time throw it into the other blank and uh, ask us, and we can make that a thing. Yeah, or you can like put it in the comments. That's true. Comments work. Or uh, email. Uh, that's true. We are improvisionentertainment at gmail dot com. Yeah, I don't know. I can't really think of too much stuff about me that like people might get actively offended by. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's and that's just that is just a trap for me to try and answer that question. So uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I think I'm trying to think of some stuff that's like really pisses people off. Um, oh, okay. I'm thinking the only thing I can think of right now is for some reason that comes to mind is that I think that people who are on death row should be used for human experiments. That is interesting. That is interesting. Like, you know how, like, we test products on animals? Mm-hmm. I was like, why wouldn't we just test it on people who are going to end up dying anyways? Sure. I mean, okay, in you fairness, could, you, right you now, could you could call it a form of, of capital punishment. Because America is looking for chemicals as an excuse on how to kill people when we're not giving the old, give, being given the old chemicals we used to use to actually, um, like, put people to permanent sleep in their dead. So people, so all these different uh, governments are making cocktails, which have people like screaming in agony for like minutes on end about uh, like their eyeballs are burning and stuff like that, and they just can't oh, breathe and they won't die. And yeah, in case you've missed this, it's a really horrible thing that's going on right now. Uh, we we the America currently has the death penalty, but the mainly chemical uh, organiz uh, organizations overseas that we buy the chemicals from to kill people aren't selling us the drugs anymore because they're like wait we don't have the death penalty over here why are we you know helping america with their fix and so since they're not selling us the drugs to kill people you know peacefully i guess i'll say um i'm sure there's some articles i put up here on screen for people to look at but yeah we basically we're torturing people to death with chemicals because we're trying to make our own cocktails at this point it's pretty sick I think the main problem with the death penalty, though, at this point, for the for the whole, like, uh, testing on people otherwise, um, I think the death penalty's main problem at this point is that verifiably 4% of people who have been killed on death row were innocent, that they found out later. And that's, that's kind of a high percentage, as far as I'm concerned. You should really be certain a person should die before you kill them, I think. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I, well, like I mean, if we're going for the controversy things, well, I got, no, I got yeah. one to add to that pile, though. Uh, I would say do it, because I was just going to say something stupid that my roommate's freshman year told me that they think is weird about me. Oh, okay. Okay, when I change the volume on some sort of device, usually it, it, it would make more sense with a TV, because they have like a wider range. My Apparently, everybody in the world changes it by fives, and I was like, that's not nuanced enough, so I changed it by twos, mainly because I don't like odd numbers. You don't like odd numbers. That's interesting. I don't, yeah, I just don't like odd numbers. I, I, I mean, I have a similar thing because televisions actually go so wide in their volume gamut at this point that five points is... My, okay, so two things to that. One, I do by threes. That's that's me. And I think when, you're weirder than I am. No Xbox offense. One, let me just do it by threes when I'm doing the voice commands. I was like, oh, yeah, we're doing it by threes. Let's go. And the second thing is my parents' audio system... It does it by um, half points. I feel like I would have fun with that personally, but then again, like, okay, what's the max if it does it by half points? I don't know. I've 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 only gotten as as high as uh, seventy two by accident because I didn't realize what I was listening to was so soft. But fair enough. It's like point five, point five, point five, and I'm like, wow, why, why? That's this interesting. This is the IGN scale. I get the IGN scale. I have no problem with the IGN scale. All right, but like, why is the volume happening in points? That's. That's very strange. Yeah, the max I've ever seen on any given one device is 100. That kind of makes sense. I've seen right. various other numbers that are weird. Like, um, on iPhones, it's like 16. Uh, I think it's the same thing on Macs. Uh, on my old TV, it was uh, 64. Um, I've seen other devices where it's 32. On my laptop, it's 100. But to my understanding, every single one of those numbers is an even number. So I would just do it by twos. Sure. Now, let's say for some reason... A device was done by 30s. I feel like your case for threes would make a valuable case. Well, I mean, I, it's it, for, it always depends on the device itself. Like the headphones I'm using right now, um, they they have little rolly ball things, so they're analog. Oh, so fair I enough. I don't have volume numbers on that, and that's 
in the grand scheme of things, that's my preferred. You know, just twist the knob until it's right where you want it and then let go. But it wouldn't be so bad if things were a lot better about keeping a goddamn standard this is what the base volume is across all your devices. What was the uh, controversial thing you wanted to say? I think that forcing religion on children is child abuse. Oh, no, absolutely. I'm 100% in agreement with you. That is uh, oh, well, abuse there in There we sense. go. We got comments now. Our comment section just exploded. Yeah. That we both, no. that we both agree on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, if if I wasn't going to say it was abuse, I would just say it's indoctrination, which has its own set of problems, but like it's just not a good thing in general. Yeah, it's like, didn't you opinion. guys play you know, Mass Effect trilogy? Come on. Indoctrination. It's bad. I actually didn't play that trilogy. Oh my God. So wait, I, but wait, did you play Andromeda? I played like a the demo of Andromeda. Oh well, by all means, don't play Andromeda. <laughs> play Mass Effect trilogy. Honestly, at this point, I might just skip the Mass Effect franchise in general. No, don't do that. No, it's 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 the best role playing in video game form that that has ever been made. Was it better than Dragon Age Inquisition? Because that's the only Bioware game I've played, and I thought it was really good. I want to say yes. Okay, I mean, I feel like I might like it more because, you know, it has, you know, it's, like, futuristic, so it has, like, guns and sci-fi and shit. Oh, yeah, no, it's... But, like, honestly, at this point, I might just, if I was going to play anything in the Mass Effect thing, I might just play Andromeda, just just because it's current gen, and I'd, it'd be easier access for me. Well, no, that's not true, actually. Uh, you can you can play all three Mass Effect games on, oh, well, actually, you don't have wait. an Xbox One, never mind. Wait, wait, they're on backwards compatibility? Yeah, all three of them. Oh, and okay, well, then... Get, and you can play them through, I, th- I think... I don't know if they're in the vault in EA Access, but I know that you can... I, I know that somewhere around that time... Maybe just the first one? I'd have to double-check that. No, you're um, fine. Go ahead. Um, that might but, be worth it, then, when I pick up an S to go back and do that. Oh, totally. So, about how we game, I generally play a game on normal because I believe that's what the developers expected the difficulty level to be, and so I judge their game based upon the normal difficulty. I know that you tend to play games on an easier difficulty because yeah, mainly I going was... for the achievements. Uh, well, in the play- case of PlayStation, it'd be trophies. Um, that also depends game to game. I would usually play on the easiest difficulty in order to get through it fast so I can get to the next game because I'd like to try a different bunch of opportunities. And I also don't like being stuck because I'm a noob. And another thing people think is something wrong with me when I say this is that I don't really like a challenge in a sense. Which is a weird thing to say. I'd like to be extremely good at something. Let me put it like this. You know how people are like, oh, I enjoy like a really close match because, you know, it keeps them on the edge of their seats. Oh, yeah, totally. I'm, I, he, I, I'm definitely there a lot. I'm totally opposite. I'd rather blow someone out so I know that I'm like significantly better than them instead of like slightly better than them. Because I feel like if somebody's close enough to me that eventually they will surpass me. Whereas if I'm like way far ahead of them and they have like no chance of catching up to me. So, um, trying to trying to get a little bit more about us when we're talking about this stuff, I will say that my – as much as I don't really care for Halo, um, Halo 3 oh my gosh. has – Don't even get me started on Halo. <laughs> I'm not getting you started on Halo. That can be another topic right. for another time. All right. All right. So, but for this moment, one of my best experiences playing multiplayer was Halo 3 because its matchmaking was such that – Generally speaking, you would always end up in this pool of people who are just a little bit better or a little bit worse than you. So it was skill-based? I mean, it had to have been because I just got into so many consistently good matches. Like, matches that were close and then I lost. Matches that were close and then I won. Matches that were basically even and it could have been anyone's game the whole way. Like, just consistently, like, the right amount. Because, you know, if if you're just killing people over and over again... Most people aren't enjoying that, so you need to get kicked in the face a little bit of the time. So the game goes, oh, oh, you're of this level now. Let me put you against people who are a little bit better than you. Like, not a ton better than you. And the same deal, if you're losing, you're losing, you're losing. A game's like, all right, well, maybe I put them into a higher bracket that they don't need to be. So you drop down a level, and in that regard, you end up going against people who aren't, like, so weak and just started the game that you're just going to mow through them, but, like, they're a little bit less experienced than you based upon how good they seem to be at the game because it's, like, it's the shooting, it's the teamwork, it's the, like... I don't know what magical math that Bungie had created specifically for Halo 3 when it was doing the matchmaking, but I consistently had really good matchmaking in that game. Oh, that's good to hear. I wonder how they did it. Like, I wonder if they found out a way to fight uh, lobby farming. I'm not sure if you know what that is. Uh, is that when people get together in a group and they're just trying to go for, like, trophies and achievements? 
Uh, no, it's, um, it's like where, uh, this is something uh, YouTubers have been accused of for a long time, but it was, I feel like it was more of a thing back in the day when, uh, for me, the COD scene was blowing up on YouTube where, um, YouTubers would get into a game and they would play for like, maybe like a minute or two and whatever. And if they didn't find it immediately easy, they just left and they kept doing that until they found a really good lobby where they did really good. So when they recorded the gameplay, all their gameplay would look like they were amazing, but they actually just spent forever trying to find a lobby where everybody was bad. Huh. Um. That's probably why skill based match skill based matchmaking actually got put into play because now it records things like uh your kill death ratio, your score per minute, your time played per lobby. Like it records important information and like sets you up with like the kind of players that are, or I guess, around your skill level. I know that at some point they figured out how to tell the difference between somebody losing their connection and someone rage quitting the game. And that made a huge difference in, like, people were sometimes doing what you, what you were talking about, like, during the first few months of playing the game. But there came a point where it was like, well, if you're just trying to get the best results for yourself, then, like, you would basically be shunned down a couple of notches on, like, how quickly you get into a match because you're somebody who either always shoots your teammates or you're somebody who's always quitting and so you aren't like the prime roast like the good stuff as far as like being able to play with you which is one of the things that's always been good about xbox live xbox live has always had really good like reporting of people for doing things and being able to block so that you don't end up with people in the same uh group same lobby that you're always in i wonder if they i'm sorry to cut you off i wonder if they fix that in gears of war it, whether like you know if it could tell between like a disconnection or like a rage quit because in gears of war you would actually lose experience if you rage quit yeah because there are certain ways to tell and the only way to the only way to be certain that you would leave a match because i remember i had a roommate who did this one time i was like dude don't do that okay um was he lag switching i don't know what lag switching is uh, okay to my understanding this is a really basic understanding of it and it might sound like self-explanatory and stupid and like unbelievable but apparently it is a thing it is basically there is a way you can like set up your internet connection to you can create lag using a switch in order to gain some sort of advantage in online multiplayer oh well i mean i i I think it only i think it would only work for the host uh, online multiplayer doesn't work one particular way across all the games it just depends um, for example, there was a point at which the original Planet Side, I remember, there was they used to have a system where if you lined up a shot and you took the shot, and taking into account um, even potential travel time and otherwise, yeah, like so bullet long, drops, the bullet velocity, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Taking into account all that stuff, you'd still make that shot. Okay, so I had a friend who compensated for not being able to get. He literally lived on a mountain. So to compensate for him not having a high-speed internet connection, because he was just using 56K, please tell me some of you in the audience remember what a 56K is. I don't um, know what a 56K is. You don't know what a 56K Okay. Nah, dude. Um, that's when you have a modem that uh, dials into the internet using your phone line, and the maximum throughput you can get over such a connection is 56kbps. That sounds horrible it i mean it's really not it's really not if playing games back then that didn't have like a lot to do across the internet they were fine fair, fair enough i guess fine. back, back the in the day is, it didn't really matter planet side was a higher end first person shooter that actually required a little bit more so the way he made up for having only a 56k for an internet connection was to just have a really beefy computer that could just, everything that you need to throw at it computational on the computer side was so super slick fast he didn't have to worry about it. Everything, like he could play the game and enjoy himself. And then they changed how the gameplay works online. How it actually registers when you're shooting and whatnot. And they made it so that because of something to do with travel time of the bullets and otherwise, that when you were shooting, um, the person needed to be where they were when the shot would hit them. So it was more based on their connection and not your connection. And they oh. was like, now the game is unplayable, I can't play it at all. Because you know, regardless Damn. of how good his 56K connection was, it was always inferior to the people who were running around on cable. So because Damn. it became more connection-based, yeah, he just started missing all the shots. And he was like, nope, made the game unplayable, you broke it. <sighs> That's terrible, man. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty oh, well. bad. So, more about so, video games, talking about yes. how specifically we got into video games. Yeah, um, uh, do you want to start with yours? Because I feel like yours is longer because, well, you're older. 
<laughs> well, that is... Oh, well, I, I guess we didn't actually say that. So I recently turned 36. And, and I turned 22 a couple months ago. Like, three months ago, yeah. Um, how old? 22? Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's like I keep forgetting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, my my very first game console was a uh, Nintendo Entertainment System in 1984. I believe that was the year after I got a drum set and the year after I got a drum set. Um, I think they thought maybe the Nintendo Entertainment System would be quieter. Little did they know I was going to play it a lot more often. <laughs> that was hilarious. That's what that's my going thought. Cause I'm like I'm like three or four at the time. Oh wait, not 1984, 1985. Oh, I got my nit- dates wrong somewhere in there. Yeah, I wait. Didn't the NES four, come out so it in been the 1985? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, didn't the NES come out in the I, US in 85? I four and I five. I four. I was four. It came out in 85. I screwed that okay, up. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, so since that time, I have had every single Nintendo home console. I have had a brick Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, and Nintendo 3DS. So you didn't have an Advance SP? No, I didn't have an Advance SP. So you didn't have the first clamshell Nintendo handheld? No. Well, okay. I don't need it. I, need, I had a GBA. I love my fat DS. Everybody was like, oh my god, it's so thick, I hate it. No, 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 I'm good. I, I mean, like they're it. not complaining now with a 3DS XL. Uh, okay, to be fair, the, the 3DS XL is just bigger. It's not fatter. The Vita fair. is kind of fat. The v- Wait, are you talking about the, the original Vita or the Slim Vita? Because I've had both. The, the original Vita. I will give you that the original Vita is kind of fat, yes. So, on that note, I've had every single PlayStation console. I have not had any PlayStation portables unless you count the... PSP Go. No, I was going to say the PSTV or whatever that's called. Oh, the PlayStation um, Because Vita. it plays PlayStation okay. games and it plays okay. Vita games. But okay. it's not portable, so I don't know where that counts. Uh, I would call it a... It's kind of like a PlayStation streaming device, honestly. So I also did not have an Xbox, but I did have an Xbox 360, and I do have an Xbox One. Mm, nice. Oh, and if, I mean, well, I, I, yeah, did you I have said a, every did, Nintendo did, console, so right, yes, right. I do have a Switch. Yeah. Right. Do you have it? Did you ever have any of the Sega consoles back in the day when they were still making consoles? Rest in peace, Sega's console business. No, because Daniel, that's from the dark time when I was a fanboy, and it was Nintendo versus Sega. Oh, okay, fair enough. I did not have Sega consoles, and I played Sega consoles at friends' houses. I was like, "Why would you have this?" Uh, because I mean, some of that was legit, and lots of it was fanboyism. So fair enough. Yeah, so I got into games at eight. Probably before age four, I probably poked at like I, I, joysticks and buttons and everything and some arcade things. There was a pizzeria not too far from where we lived way back then. And I remember playing Dig Dug on that and stuff. And I don't remember if that was before or after the NES. It was around the same time. Oh but, my gosh, um, you played Dig Dug? I played Dig Dug, yeah. I've heard of that. <laughs> For everybody who's wondering what the hell Dig Dug is, uh, well, some of you can see it on screen. And the rest of you, well, I mean, you have your... You're probably listening to this on your phone, so look it up. Or some sort of internet-enabled device, so definitely look it up. Yes, yes. So, uh, your your getting into gaming is more recent. Yeah, a lot more recent. Partially because I had a significant amount of dark years and others because I'm just younger than you. Oh, just sorry, do you want me to go into it now? Oh, yeah, go, go, go. Oh, yeah, no, okay, so um, I got into gaming, I guess, a little after the age of two because on my brother's fourth birthday, he got an N64. And we pretty much, from that point on, played as much as we could together on the N64 system. He got Super Mario 64, and we pretty much played it all night until we passed out. And then we just played a bunch of other games on the N64. And that then, sounds like how, how I first played Mario 64, actually. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And then uh, later, uh, he wanted to get a GameCube. So we played a, a decent amount of games on that. Not nearly as much. He started, I don't know, He at that point he started kind of growing out of gaming, so it was a lot of just me playing stuff. And then at, at a certain point he just didn't really do it on his own volition anymore. So I got, I asked my parents to give me a Wii, and I probably burnt out on that quicker than I should have. And then I didn't play games for a while. And then a friend of mine got me back into gaming with COD, mainly COD 4, and Modern Warfare 2. So oh, I started so playing both of those. Yeah, definitely. So I started playing a lot of 360 at my friends' houses when I could. Uh, played some, played some of that on PS3 with some friends that I had, and that was a little bit of fanboy, con- like console war fanboyism at that point. But that was 
for, for someone who didn't own either of those consoles, it was stupid for me to have that opinion. And then my cousin moved in with me, and he had a 360, so I just played a fuck ton of 360 with him. And then after he moved out, I got a 360 the summer before the PS4 came out. And then now I have a PS4. And then uh, sometime into the PS4's lifespan, probably within the past year, I got a PS Vita. Oh, and before that, I got a PS Vita TV like you do. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm contemplating getting an Xbox One S and a Nintendo Switch. Man, for for money and gaming, I gotta say, Xbox One is where I think it is right now. Yeah, definitely. Also... To be also, if you didn't notice, um, I have been through pretty much every major console company now, and I've only ever had one console per generation. So this might be the first generation I've been a multi plat kind of guy, which is a weird thing for me. Mostly because I haven't, you know, before this generation, I never had to buy my own console. Oh, that reminds so. me. Funnily enough, as many, as much as I've always had Nintendo systems, the first system I ever bought with my own money was a system I forgot to mention. The only Sega system I ever had was the Sega Dreamcast. Oh, that's why I asked you if you did any Sega stuff. Yeah, it just, I don't know, it slipped out of my head. Um, I guess that didn't last very long because they stopped supporting it. Like, what, 18 months after launch? No, I'm certain it was longer than that. It had a, it had a good little run in there. I mean, uh, some of my favorite games are still on it. NBA Showtime, uh, the... Home console version of San Francisco Rush 2049. I don't really care for the Sonic Adventure games, but I mean, let Sonic, I mean, for the most part, did not survive the transition to 3D. The last 3D Sonic game I enjoyed, which I enjoyed a lot, I'll, I'll grant you, was uh, Sonic Generations. That game was pretty amazing. Nice. N- probably not as amazing as Sonic Mania, which is crazy good. Yeah, I've but, heard Sonic Mania is pretty good. So, yeah. Um, I think the only So, yeah, two's... so you went yeah. from N64 to Wii. N64 to GameCube to Wii. GameCube to Wii. But then, yeah. well, so here's the thing. So, so, but you, so you didn't own a PlayStation 3? No, I never put, owned a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360 up until, like, super late into the generation. Uh, I played PS3 so, right, where, just where the 360 was over and then you got a 360, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I was about to say, the Wii and the 360 are in the same generation. Yeah, that's true, but, uh, I mean... Because it's kind of weird. A... Nintendo has two consoles in this generation right now, which is kind of weird. So, the Wii U started this generation of consoles and the switch is in the same generation of consoles that's weird that's never happened before well okay <clears throat> what am i saying sega exists all right sega put out multiple versions of the same console repeatedly and it's why they became a game maker rather than a game maker and a console manufacturer are you talking about when they put out like the sega cd and the sega mega drive or are you talking about like other things okay so Sega had four versions of the Sega Genesis. Jesus Christ. One of which was portable. It was called the Sega Nomad. Oh, um, I've heard of that. Right, so um, they had at least two versions of the Game Gear, which was their portable system. Um, then the horrific amalgamation of... So, you remember the N64 where you could plug in the little expansion the, pack, which would double yeah, the Yeah, 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 the expansion pack. Okay, so before the expansion pack, Sega had a thing where you could take uh, one of the versions of their console and you could set it into this tray with a CD, which was called the Sega CD, and it would plug into the system, and so you could play Sega CD games through the system the way you had it hooked up and play it through the... So it was this... Okay. And then, trying to make the 16-bit system a 32-bit system, there was this lump called the 32X, which you would plug into the top of the Sega Genesis... And you could have that plugged into the top of the Sega Genesis while the CD thing was plugged into the side of the Sega Genesis. And you could play, I think there were like two 32X CD games. Oh my god. And on top of that, they made a Sega CD I, I think it was called, which was just the Sega CD games that were by themselves. It was a separate console. And let me see. I feel like I'm missing one. And then, and then of course, like immediately after the Sega CD happened, they came out with the Sega Saturn. And so by the time the Sega Dreamcast, which by itself is a really good system, it's a really good system. That didn't get its chance because Sega had burned out its own audience with all these like, you remember how, and hopefully so because I mean this is recent for you, you remember how people weren't really sure, general audiences weren't really sure what the difference was between the Wii U and the Wii? Yes, everybody was like, is it the same thing? Is it an expansion? Because it used the same controllers. So that that definitely threw people off. So, 
you know how like the let's say the original PlayStation, uh, hopefully that's within your timeline. The original PlayStation went through a couple of different appearance revs, right? Mm-hmm. Most consoles go through at least two. So I'm sure you've been around for that, like the PlayStation Slim or the PlayStation Two, the Slim, the Super Slim. But Sega made a better version of their console, and it was still the Sega Genesis. But when they got to that third version of their console, it was still the Sega Genesis, but there was a big white three on it. That's but it was weird. still the Sega Genesis. Now that's not confusing as fuck. I don't know. That's way more confusing to me than the Wii and the Wii U. Like it literally has a three on the top of it. Why would I not think it's a different system? And so that kind of shenanigans with the like, and then you plug in the CD thing, and you put the 32x on the top of it, and then and then all this stuff. Uh, Sega put out so many systems in such a short period of time that, I, I, to me, like in America, I'm like, why, why, why would you ever even like? I, I, I didn't give the Dreamcast the light of day for like a year, and then when I was over at a friend's house, and I was like, wait, hold on. This is like, now that I've been playing it for like a year, I realize this is kind of good, actually. This is kind of a good system because what it was was the the Dreamcast itself shared a lot of the same motherboard with a lot of different arcade cabinets. So there were plenty of games that when they came to home console, they just played like they were the arcade game on the console. The aforementioned San Francisco Rush 2049 and uh, NBA Showtime. Best version of NBA Showtime, easily. All right, guys, so... Hopefully that has been enough for you to learn something about us during the course of this episode. Uh, We're going to have polls from time to time for you guys to pick what you want us to talk about in the next episode. We may find occasions in which we have to hit a particular topic and talk about that, in which case, I mean, you know, hopefully you'll trust in us to pick stuff you'll still be interested in. But what this poll is for is for you to go ahead and pick what we should talk about in our very first episode. The results you see on screen, unless they've changed by the time... Uh, the information has been put up should be that wanting to know more about us and this specific podcast is in the lead. If you voted on that before hearing this episode, uh, know that you can go back and change your vote and pick to something else. And that's fine. You can do that. One person, one vote. So having said that, uh, the topics are listed on screen, but we're going to go through them real quick because they're not like detailed out on the poll. They should be self-explanatory, but maybe they're not. So again, first thing was more detail on us. Um... And we have other things to say, but we're not used to talking about ourselves, I guess I would say. Would that be right, Daniel? Yeah, like, we need to figure out what kind of stuff people want to know before we tell them what they want to know. Right, right. And sometimes it's, well, not sometimes, but a lot of the times when you're getting views and opinions from people, it's good to know who the person is. So, in that case, the second option on screen, you want to take that one? Yeah, I got it. It's fanboyism. Mainly, we we refer to fanboyism in video games, but really applies to all walks of life basically if you really like like a company that puts out good stuff or a specific product by that company then you're a fan or a fanboy of this company or product for example hunter mud is a fan of apple products well i think the the way this goes is that being a fan is a good thing being a fanboy is not and there's more detail that we can put into that thought in in a full episode but it kind of boils down to if you're a fanboy you like only the good about a company you never acknowledge any of the bad things about it or not just a company but like you know a religion or a political party or what have you um in the political sense you'd be a partisan in the religious sense you'd be maybe a zealot i guess but basically it's all fanboyism and it comes back to like video games or it comes back to sports teams if you go this is the best and only this is it and there's nothing wrong with this thing that I like. Well, that's fanboyism. I'm a fan of yeah, Apple I, products because I like them, but there's, you know, it, they have faults. Yeah, and I feel like another aspect of that is, like, not recognizing the values of, like, the competitors or your opponents in that, too. Oh, absolutely. Um, past that, we have an option for uh, video game movies and movie video games, which are two connected but different topics, but I believe we could throw them together. and yeah, discuss definitely. What- yeah, we could discuss what we think are the best video game to movie adaptations and what we think are the best movie to video game adaptations. Though I feel like that second one isn't happening as often as the first one anymore. I don't know, I feel like as the industries, the industries like of both movies and video games have gone on, that like the IPs tend to go one way as opposed to the other. The next topic is the state of the video game industry right now. Obviously, the year is not over, but as the year progresses, we get into the like the large fall triple a releases that like just cover all of like september october november and like some in december but we just want to talk about how the industry is doing 
at the moment. Because usually right here around the end of the year, uh, somewhere between, you know, September to the end of October is kind of the focal point for how things will set the pace because it's the busiest time of the year as far as video games are concerned, which I think to this day still kind of sucks. Um, the other option is the thing I always call Christmas 2, which is every game that misses this year but comes out in February. I always consider February to be the the next little clump of everything that missed. Like, for example, right now, I guess that would be Far Cry 5. Next up would be gamer behavior, uh, sportsmanship, as you will. Um, one of the things I like to do is if I have a good game against somebody, but they totally trounce me, I like to send them a message and say, hey, you know, uh, good game because you, you owned me and it was, it was a good experience because I feel like not enough people say nice things, which is the other side of the equation, which is people not saying nice things. Um bigoted, hateful language, uh, epithets, and all that stuff. Um, generally, we could we could do multiple episodes if we just wanted to go to like a singular person's Twitter feed and read off all the awful, hateful things they've ever said. But it would probably come down to more maybe our personal experiences, and that might make more sense. Yeah, definitely. Are we also including like online etiquette on that topic? I feel like it's kind of in the same vein, because it's yeah. one of those, I feel like everybody gets a better community overall if people are just better that's one of those reasons for like you should slow down and you know let people like into traffic and stuff like that because if you cut them off they're likely to cut off the next person who's likely to cut off the next person and seven people from them it's you again and it's all your fault on some level so like the nicer you are in general the more likely you are to get nicety from others and that includes in gamer culture like if you're in a if you're in a squad of a whole bunch of people you know spewing racial obscenities your best two options are one, um, go and report them. Uh, in the case of Xbox Live, and I'm almost certain uh, Sony finally has something that's yeah. good for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PSN has that too. Okay, and then leave the team. I'm sorry if the team is good; it sucks, but leave the team. Next up on the list is uh, doing awful things for fun beyond the real world. This is situations where you uh, commit violence or obscenities in video games. Or even when you just enjoy seeing these things done in, like, uh, movies or TV shows, or if you enjoy hearing, or, sorry, reading about it in, like, books. If, like, that's just the kind of, like, content you like consuming, that's on you. But in terms of enjoying it, that is sometimes looked down upon in certain views. Like, if you were to play a game where you just go around killing people all the time, Telling that to other people and saying you had fun kind of gives them the wrong idea, like you belong in jail or a mental asylum. Oh, yeah. Well, when you're saying, like, oh, man, I, I got into this mass shooting spree in, uh, like, Grand Theft Auto or something, and, like, all these cops were showing up, and I would just pull out this rocket launcher, and I'm blowing them away. And that's, like, some of you are thinking, oh, that's not a big deal, because whatever games, that I'm, I'm with you. But that's not the extent of, like, everything from games to video games lets you do these things. Like, how many how many people have been enjoying uh, Game of Thrones? Well, I mean, that series has incest in it. That's not socially acceptable. Same to do with, like, Breaking Bad, for example. Or any of those uh, Flash games you can play online. You know, uh, text-based adventures that are doing awful things in a sexual nature both to you and to the NPCs. I think one of those through lines that'll end up coming out through this show having to do with Monsaga, having to do with the mun of any particular person, is that we don't believe in thought crimes. Like, you're okay to enjoy the things that you enjoy, regardless of what they are, because there's a difference between thinking about or having a fetish for even something you can't control, as long as you don't act on those things. Because there are some awful fucking things that you can think and enjoy, but as long as you don't act that way towards other people, then it's fine as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Like, there's also the issue of, like, if you're telling somebody, like, you give the GTA example about, like, if you're telling somebody that story of what you did in GTA, and some random other person, like, overhears you, they might think you're crazy, and you might have actually done this crap in real life. Or, or at the very least, they might think, that's respect, you should have, you know, blue lives matter and shit, you should, like, respect police officers and whatnot, and I'm like, I, it's a video game. Like, that is, uh, like, I, I'm not to say video games don't matter, they do, but it's also an outlet. Maybe I enjoyed being a criminal in a video game because I'd never fucking do it in real life. To reference the the religious aspects, one of the quotes I always hear from Pendulet about him being a hardcore atheist, which I am not, I'm just an atheist, um, is that people tell him that, you know, uh, how are you supposed to have morals without the Bible? And his response is always, 
Well, I have morals anyway. You see, I have raped and murdered as many people as I want to, and that number is zero. And... Wow. Right, exactly. He has raped and murdered exactly as many people as he wants to, and that number is zero. And I I get that, and that's kind of the same thing, right? That's the, you will do things in the games, you will enjoy the... I mean, come on, how many people don't enjoy, you know, watching, like, one of the Punisher flicks and just having him go hog on people and blowing them away? I know some of you are going to say me. I don't enjoy that. I don't like uh, gratuitous violence. I like some gratuitous violence. I got to I gotta be honest with you. Um, having said that, transitioning to the, the next possible thing you could vote for on the list of topics we could do in the next episode would be uh, monetization in the games industry, which sounds boring, but hey, you might get to hear us rant for like the entire episode. I'm basically just it. me saying fuck loot boxes the entire episode, but sure. Right, so there could be... Everything to do with loot boxes, uh, microtransactions, um, how you feel about DLC, expansion packs, like because some of these things have good connotations to people and some of them don't. My least favorite is always the the game that you know could be free and is going to be 20 bucks in eight months, but right now they want 60 from you, and it sucks and includes these little transaction things in them because they want to make money back on it, but they can't trust that their product is good enough to just give it out and then have it come with the microtransactions. A game that Daniel and I have both enjoyed, uh, Rocket League, or originally launched on like the PlayStation 4 as the, the free month game. And people just got it on PS4. Awesome. And the game has, you know, these loot boxy like transactional things that people can like I bought the DeLorean for a buck. Whatever. I love the DeLorean. And Yeah, yeah, no, there's there's that issue too, because like there's also another thing where, like, video games, like, like, AAA launch games have been the same price point for, like, way too long, whereas the cost of, like, development, marketing, shipping the product, all of that has gone up. So, like, publishers and developers have to come up with, like, new avenues of revenue, and this is one of the ways they're doing it. Yeah, and it sucks because it doesn't ever feel like they need the new avenues of revenue because I always approach from... we. We don't necessarily need games that are just like giant sandboxes every single year make a new map because I remember the days of GoldenEye on the N60. Especially GoldenEye had tons of maps when first-person shooters now seem to launch with like six or eight maps. Uh, GoldenEye had, I don't even remember, I think it was 20. And wow. they were good. And it was And they were good maps. Like, I remember it was like four lines of five, I think is what it was. Yeah, it was good stuff. Even when two of the multiplayer maps you might enjoy to play were unlocked by completing things in the story mode, and so they were less played because less people had them unlocked, they were still there and they were good and people liked them. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Thank you for that information. <laughs> cool. All right. I try. <laughs> Thanks. Now, the uh, next topic is how games used to be better. And this is something we kind of touched on in a previous episode of Nerdy Like Us, but basically we talk about certain things in certain games that are newer that we think have been done better in older games. The the aforementioned multiplayer maps being so much less today than they were before. Yes, that is one of that is an example. It's not necessarily a mechanic, but it's like more content. We used to get more content for the same price, and now we get less. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's or we there's used to get more content for less. I think yeah, no games used to be fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> early nineties, and then I think the price increased, and it hasn't increased since. Yeah, I think it was last generation. Everything officially went. No, not everything. I'm no, sorry. No, the no. PS3 and 360 officially went to sixty dollars. I I feel like it was that like, like that before the PS3 360 generation. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe so. I believe it was fifty for. Well, okay, you go back far enough. And you have the time before prices got standards. But when prices leveled out, they leveled out to 50 um, And then last generation, they upped it by 10 bucks. everybody but Nintendo. Wii games still came out at 50 bucks, And now they're sitting at 60 Or 90 if you want to include season passes, which would go back to that monetization topic. Yeah, but I mean, season passes range from like 10 to like $50, so... Uh, what are we talking Battlefront now? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, like ten dollars would be like uh, Lego Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Fifty dollars would be like Call of Duty and Battlefield season passes and Battlefront season passes. <laughs> Which is a so general reminder to everybody who wants to be mad at me for a different thing because this is you know the way the episode goes. Um, guys, seriously, this year I don't I don't care how good it is. Don't buy Call of Duty because of last year. Like seriously, 
and it's the monetization. If you want to know why specifically I'm saying that, well, one, look up the Jimquisition episode about it, and two, vote for that, because I will tell you, do not buy this year's Call of Duty because of last year. Um, That goes into our next poll topic, though, which is franchise fatigue. Yeah, franchise fatigue is a very big problem, because, like, if you're playing the same, roughly the same kind of game all the time, or even the case of, like, annual franchises, like Call of Duty, as we were talking about, or, like, s- most sports games, with the exception of the return of NBA Live this year, and then, like, Just Dance, or all those sorts of annualized franchises, they are roughly the same game almost every year. And there are very little changes, and they still come out at $60, and eventually people just play the same thing a couple times and then they get bored okay the next topic is uh rick and morty which is a uh really great sci-fi show that's come out recently has gained a cult following for all just like the crazy antics they do on the show that plus the uh you don't realize until the fifth or sixth episode that oh wait there's a coherent plot happening (laughs) which they really take a little while to get into i I started watching it and then I stopped because I didn't quite get to that part. And then when they immediately referenced something that happened in one of the early episodes, I I actually sat up and went, wait, 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 there's a story. There's a through line. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Because they kind of like, they kind of like walk the line between like a serialized like individual episodes and like an overarching plot. And they don't touch on the overarching plot too often. But when it happens, it actually does a really good job of encompassing everything episodic programs are a thing and they happen and it's one of those jokes where like i mean you know like kenny dying every episode in the original south parks um like that was just a thing but he was back fine the next week and that was i remember that was trey and matt's like they were joking about that because you know there's no consistency and now look at the recent seasons of south park apparently there's cohesive plots that's going from episode yeah, to episode yeah, yeah not, I think to, apparently not even co- to take away you know south park stick of truth which like a whole season by itself which was great i still need to play that game but yeah no apparently like a couple seasons ago south park started doing like a whole season is one conglomerate story and that when i heard that for the first time i was like i don't know how they're doing that but I guess, you know, after working on Stick of Truth, I guess they figured out a way. That combined with, if you have enough characters for long enough, people want to know how they interconnect and stuff. And, well, to the point of Rick and Morty, uh, we have plenty of things to say about that show because there are plenty of, like, theories and what's going on what are uh, particular characters. The problem for me is that each of these seasons are, I mean, I'm going to say relatively short. And I kind of want more. Uh, Rick and Morty also kind of sits in this place where it's a fun sci-fi show, even though it's a cartoon Um, It hits on a lot of sci-fi things that I find very entertaining, but it's also kind of like you can't necessarily get into the main character. I mean, you can, but you can't. It's kind of like Walter White from Breaking Bad. Like, he's an awful character. He's an interesting, awful character. And then the last thing that we have on the list before the other, and the other is the big one, but the last thing we have on the list is just talking about the Xbox One X. We each have some things to say about it, and we each have our thoughts. Um, I believe that the um, PlayStation 4 Pro is a pointless upgrade, and I believe that the Xbox One X is, if you have a 4K setup, is worthwhile. So that's where I sit. If you want to know why I think that, or if you want to go ahead and hate on me in the comments in this uh, episode just because I said that, go ahead. I'll mostly ignore you because you're just being negative. Critique. Don't just diss. Critique. And then, of course, we got that other blank. Um, this is for if you have a topic you want us to, to approach, so maybe something we said just now that you think could be a topic, um, go ahead and put it in the other blank. And what I'm seeing from the results of everybody who's voted so far, most of the people want to know more about us. So if you were the, one of the people who are already voted and said you want to know more about us, you listen to this episode go, oh, well, I heard more about them. You can go back and change your vote. So go ahead and do that. Yeah. Or if you don't feel like you heard enough, but you enjoyed what you heard, you can stick with your answer and hope to hear more about us in a future episode. That's true, because if the winning number at that point, when we begin to record our first actual episode, is you want to know more about us, then we will tell you more. We're not used to necessarily talking about ourselves, so there's that. But if you want us to, we will. Now... Uh, This is the part at which I should probably remind everybody, if you enjoyed the episode, please like. If you want to see more episodes from us, uh, please subscribe. And for the poll, and for the episode itself, it would mean us a big deal because we're beginning here fresh again, starting a new show, Mun Saga. Um, If you would go ahead and share um, on any of your social media, 
or just among your friends to go, hey, this looked like this is going to be interesting, or isn't this neat? I voted in this poll, and they actually did the topic that I voted for, and that's kind of cool. Cool. Go ahead and do that. Share it if you would. Um, and lastly, of course, as many things do, we have a Patreon. Uh, any money that you can contribute because you feel like contributing, that will help us out and will allow us to make a better episode. If you have, for example, listened to this episode and heard any audio problems that I don't know about yet, uh, those audio problems come from us not having really great equipment to do this with. We are trying to make the best quality that we can with what we have. Other than that, uh, final thoughts, Daniel? Um, basically, just to reiterate what Hunter said, if you think we're worth more than a microtransaction, you should donate to our Patreon. I hope worth more than a microtransaction. I think we are. This has been Monsaga. Thank you for listening. And we will see you in the future.